Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Metal and Beyond. Today we are talking about relationships and we're going to go pretty deep. I want to share three powerful concepts with you, powerful things that if you grasp, that's going to really help you have that amazing rock solid relationship. And it doesn't matter if you're married or you just have a boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, life partner, this is going to help you. Even if you're single, I challenge you to watch this because it's going to help you build those characters characteristics that you need to have that successful relationship and even better to help you find the right type of person. Now real quick I do want you to watch the entire video. I'm actually going to share some personal things at the end of it but I also want you to come back to this. Those of you who do have a significant other I also want you to come back and watch this with your significant other. Now that might be a little uncomfortable for you because there's some things I'm going to talk about in this video that it's going to be like, oh, it's going to kind of expose some areas that you might be struggling with. And your other half might be like, okay, he's right. You better start doing this. That's not my intent though, guys. This, my intent really is to, is to help you build a rock solid relationship and help you overcome some of the challenges that us musicians often have in relationships. Now, the reason why I'm catering this to us musicians and guitar players, well, that's what my channel is about here. But the reason is because us musicians, we, we have some, I don't want to say they're dispositions, but we have some characteristics about us. One of those is we're very passion driven. To do what we do, we have to be passion driven. It's just like ingrained in us. We're very passion driven. Our emotions are a bit heightened. They're a bit more heightened than normal people. And again, that's just something that's embedded in us as musicians. The other thing that makes us unique, and it sometimes can make being in a relationship with a musician a little bit more difficult, is us musicians, we're kind of free spirits. We don't like to conform. We don't like to go with the norm of society. You know, we have our own thing, our own way. All that said, three things we're going to talk about. These three things are going to help you build that rock solid relationship. Number one is respect. Here's the thing, because of the way us musicians are wired, we have a tendency to think that we're always right, or we're right most of the time. That attitude can very much clash with our partner's attitude and their opinion. And oftentimes what that leads to is simply us not respecting their opinion because we're right. We're the passion driven ones. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing with our life. We're chasing this dream and we're writing music. So it's, it's got to be this way. It's got to be my way. And your other half may be saying, well, no, but you know, I feel different about this. I have a different opinion about that. And a lot of times it's easy for us musicians to kind of discard that opinion because we're right. And that leads to disrespecting our other half, okay? And we don't want to do that. We want to instead, we want to be open to their opinion. And in fact, let's take it a step further. We want to actually treasure their opinion and we want to honor their view on things. So you really have to develop that deep respect for your other half and listen to them and hear them out and realize that your way is not always the right way. We get so caught up in our own little world, in the music world, it's easy to do, and then we just kinda like shun the opinion and the viewpoint of our other half. Now, the way to show your other half that you respect them, that you hold their opinion at a high level, it leads me into number two here, and that's not just listening to your other half, not just hearing them, but listening with empathy. Now, empathy means listening to someone with a deep and genuine desire to fully understand them and understand where they're coming from. I'll give you an example. How many times have you been talking with your other half? You hear what they're saying, right? They're talking to you. Maybe it's kind of heated. Maybe you don't agree on something and you hear what they're saying. You're listening, but you're building up at that same time, what you want to say. I mean, that stuff's just rolling off the tip of your tongue. You're like, man, I can't wait till they stop talking because I've got something important to say and they need to hear this. That's what hurts your relationship. That right there is not listening with empathy. Listening with empathy means you are listening to them, but you're shutting yourself down while they're talking. It means you drop your ego you're not thinking about you. You're not thinking about your opinion or what you're going to say next. You're not trying to build up your case. You are truly listening to them with empathy. You are truly trying to understand their viewpoint, even if you don't agree with it. You're trying really hard and with a, again, with a genuine effort 
to understand what they're saying and why they feel the way that they do. That's listening with empathy. That will also change your response to your other half. And it'll do something else too. It's going to show that you deeply care about them, that you love them and you treasure them, and you, you want to know why they feel the way that they do. Now, of course, if they're not used to you listening with empathy, when you start, they're going to be like, something is weird here. You've changed. What's going on? Are you sick or something? <laughs> but you need to practice this. You need to practice this with your other half. You need to practice listening with empathy, making sure that you are engaged in what they're saying and that you care about them enough to really have that genuine desire to deeply understand everything that they're saying, their viewpoint, where they're coming from, why they feel the way that they do. As you do that, something magical happens. They start to realize that, hey, you are listening. And then they, in turn, may be more apt to also listening to you with empathy as well. And it just makes things flow so much smoother. Now, on a side note, I truly believe if people listened with empathy in general, if we like really listen to one another with that genuine desire to deeply understand one another, I think that would solve a lot of the world's problems. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. This is just about your relationship. The third thing that's really gonna help you musicians have a better relationship with your significant other is involve them. Involve them in what you're doing. Now, I don't mean that you have to have them sit in your studio with you while you're recording music or writing music. That doesn't mean that they always have to be with you when you're playing or practicing. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is pull them into your music business, okay? And I say business because, of course, if you're a full-time musician, yeah, you know it's a business. Even if you're a part-time musician and you're playing for money, you're getting paid to play, that's, you know, that's a business. But even if you're not at that level yet, you probably will be at some point. So you do need to think of your music as a true business. This is part of your livelihood, whether you do it for fun or not. You know, you want to be able to get paid for playing music and pursuing your passion. So involve your other half in the decisions that are made. Because with your other half not being in the music like you are, see, we're, we're in this bubble, right? We're in this musical bubble here, and we can't really see too far outside that bubble, but your other half will be able to see your music from a different perspective. So you don't want to shun them from your music. You want to involve them. See, too many times, and this is, this is a problem us musicians have, we think of ourselves as this kind of like off to the side category of people and some of us think that we're elite we're this elite group of people well hey we kind of are us musicians i mean come on let's be honest no but really we we put ourselves in this bubble and that sometimes severs that line of communication with our other half then they start feeling left out of that circle you want them to be part of this with you because they're oftentimes going to bring a different perspective that you may not be aware of because remember we're in this little musician bubble over here right we don't want anybody to come into that you know we're like well you don't understand you know i'm a musician i'm a songwriter you just don't get it because you're not don't be like that involve your significant other involve them in decisions i'll give you an example uh on the side i'm playing some acoustic gigs here and there and i'm playing a lot of 80s style music and I'll practice my songs on the patio. I want my wife, again, she doesn't have to be there for every song because I know that gets boring hearing the same stuff over and over, but I do value her opinion on some of the songs. Like for example, the other day I was playing a tune and she was like, you know, I'm, I'm really not feeling that. Maybe you shouldn't play that. So I value her opinion. And I'm able to value her opinion because I involve her in my music. I, I treasure her view on that. And her opinion, her view on that may save me from some embarrassment <laughs> playing a song live that maybe is not that great. You know, I think it's good, but she's hearing the song from a listener perspective, from the audience perspective. And because she loves me, she's being honest with me about that because she wants us to succeed. So more than just involving your significant other in your music and some of the decisions that are made, make sure you don't shun them, okay? Make sure you don't sever that tie of communication. Make sure you don't segregate. It's like, okay, well, we've got a relationship here, but this is my music over here, and you can't come in here. You can't come into this circle, this bubble. This is, you know, this is different. 
you don't understand. Don't be that person because that will not help your relationship at all. Now, I told you in the beginning that I would share something personal with you. We're getting there. But first, real quick, if this video helped you guys, please give it a thumbs up. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel, ding the little bell, all that good stuff. This is primarily a metal music and guitar channel. It will always be that. However, I did start this series called Beyond Metal to just share some things that will hopefully inspire you and give you that motivation and just help you push through those things in life that we all deal with. So let me first share that I have been with my current wife uh, since 2008. I'm filming this in 2020. I suck at math, but I think that's over 12 years. So we actually have a rock solid relationship and marriage. We love each other deeply and our relationship has done nothing but gotten better over the years. That's not typical, but it's because of the three things that we talked about today, the three things that I shared with you today, which I'll go over quickly again. Respect, having that deep respect for one another, listening with empathy, having that genuine desire to deeply understand what your other half is saying, where they're coming from, and valuing their opinion and their view. And then third is, I don't keep my music over here in this bubble and say, no, you cannot enter. It's more like, no, this is, this is part of you. This is part of our life. It's not just me. So I involve her in musical decisions. Now, prior to that, I had gone through two divorces. And I'm not going to go deeply into that, but you know, when I say I've learned a few things in life and from my own failures, understand that when you go through something uh, like that in life, you can't really point fingers at the other person. You really have to first look at yourself and you have to dig deep and be honest with yourself and, and you have to say, well, what are some of the changes that I need to make from that lesson that I learned? You have to assume that everything starts and ends with you, that everything is your fault somewhere down the line and actually that was actually the beyond metal video that i put out in this series prior to this one i'll put the link up there if you guys want to go check that and that video is kind of hard to listen to that's a very difficult concept for most people to accept that everything is you it's not the other person now sometimes you choose the wrong person but that's still on you once you accept that then you can really take control of your life and you can really learn things about yourself. And you have now the power to be a better version of yourself. And in turn, that's gonna be a really awesome version that you give to your current spouse or your current boyfriend, girlfriend, and you can share that with them. So I just wanted to share that real quick with you as we close here. And again, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Please let me know if this helped you as well. Uh, leave that in the comments. And if you have any questions or if you want to share maybe some of your experiences and thoughts on this video or maybe some things that you have practiced in your current relationship that have helped you grow together stronger. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, as always, keep it metal.